Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. The liberal peace advocacy organization J Street has been advocating for a two-state peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians and for employing regional diplomacy over use of force since its incorporation a decade ago. Its founder and president, Jeremy Ben-Ami, is in St. Louis to participate in a discussion at Congregation Sher Emeth this evening. He'll be joined by Rabbi Jim Bennett of Sher Emeth. The discussion is titled, How to Be Pro-Israel and Pro-Peace in the 21st Century. Both men join me in studio. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. Jeremy, if I can start with you, I think for clarification for our our listeners, uh, can you tell me what the difference is between the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, APAC, and J Street? Sure. The uh, origin of J Street uh, is an effort to establish a different kind of a voice in American politics and also in the American Jewish community in support of the state of Israel. The traditional voices, and APAC is one of them, not the only one, but the traditional voices say the only way to be pro-Israel, to support Israel, uh, is to provide 100 percent backing for the government of Israel and whatever it's doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Essentially, it's an Israel right or wrong approach. J Street was founded with the notion that you can be supportive of the state of Israel, but also critical of the policies of the government and saying there actually is a better way for Israel to move forward and a better way for Americans who support Israel to make that support known. Uh, Let me get this out of the way right at the top. I'm sure that you've addressed this before. The American ambassador to Israel has been critical of your organization because of its its motto. Uh, What what do you make of that and and his criticism? Well, there's a real divide, and it's a divide in the Jewish community. It's a divide in the non-Jewish community that supports Israel uh, between folks who are more politically right of center Uh, and folks who are more center, center left. Uh, Folks on the right uh, believe that uh, Israel should continue to control and uh, oversee all of the land that exists Mm -hmm. between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. And those of us in the center left think there should be two states for two peoples. Mm -hmm. And this is a fundamental fork in the road for the future of the state of Israel. And the ambassador who represents the United States, is on one side of that divide, and J Street is on the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's a fundamental argument. It's a very important debate and argument. The the motto being pro-Israel, pro-peace. Right. That's that's our view, is that the pursuit of peace, the peaceful resolution of Israel's conflict with the Palestinian people who also live in that same land, is critical to the security, the survival, uh, the democratic nature, and, and the Jewish character of the state of Israel. If you don't have a second state, then you're going to have 13 million people that live in this land. Half of them are Jewish and half of them are Palestinian. And only the Jews will have the political rights. And and something is fundamentally wrong with that. And that's not the way for a Jewish state uh, to survive in the 21st century. So to be pro-Israel and pro-peace is to say there need to be two states for two peoples. And that's the way to secure Israel's future. Rabbi Bennett, what sort of a dialogue is going on amongst uh, your congregants about this? Well, it's precisely because of the kind of dialogue that's going on amongst our congregants and amongst the American Jewish community that uh, motivated us to want to bring Jeremy in to speak. Uh, I believe the vast majority of American Jews are uh, ideologically aligned with the very issues that Jeremy's spoken about and that J Street stands for, the idea that uh, Israel, to survive as a Jewish and democratic state, has to be a moral state and therefore has to affirm the rights of the Palestinian people to their national aspirations to be fulfilled as well. Mm-hmm. The sad truth is that uh, unfortunately, often these kinds of ideological discussions that uh, exist in the American Jewish community get lost in uh, politics and ideology and an unwillingness of people to actually acknowledge that uh, they do agree with this and and they retreat to uh, old fears and um, a kind of binary view of the world that it's all Israel or nothing, when in fact, when pressed, most people, I believe, value systems affirm the very pro-Israel, pro-peace vision that uh, demands and ultimately will require a two-state solution. 
two nationalist groups, each fulfilling their nationalist aspirations. Jeremy, is there anything approaching a, a peace process right now? Well, you've got the illusion uh, that the president is seeking what he has termed, quote unquote, the ultimate deal. And he assigned his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and some close uh, associates, including the ambassador uh, to Israel, uh, as a very, very small, uh, relatively unexperienced team uh, to pursue that ultimate deal. So in their minds, there is a peace process. They believe they're going to put together a plan at some point and introduce that. Um, But most of us who've been involved in this for some time uh, believe that that plan is most likely dead on arrival, and it certainly isn't going to be the kind of balanced compromise that is going to be necessary if you actually want to resolve the conflict. The approach of the Trump administration and of Ambassador Friedman and some of the other folks uh, that are involved in this is very much uh, to come down on the side of the state of Israel in this dispute, which some people in the Jewish community thinks makes him a friend of Israel. But in the view of folks like us at J Street, we think that actually to be a friend of Israel is to help achieve the compromise, to actually be a balanced mediator uh, and not to put your thumb on the scale only of one side. What, what about the oh, – no, if I could ahead. add to that, um, <clears throat> and uh, speaking as a rabbi, a, a Jew, a person of faith who believes that my faith, our faith has uh, throughout its long history affirmed not only political reality on the ground but also demands uh, an aspiration to a moral truth – It's not simply about having a peace process that will result in a resolution, but it has to be a resolution that is moral and just. The state of Israel has to be held accountable to behave in a just and moral way. And there is an illusion that supporting the current Netanyahu government is right regardless. But I think that the position that many American Jews today who are more nuanced and critical in their uh, view of Israel says it's not good enough just to support Israel. One has to support an an aspiration of morality and justice and peace that will ultimately undergird a peace agreement. Wouldn't a single state, however, with uh, equal rights for all, be moral and just? Perhaps more so than a two state solution. It might be, but you know, as people, I can only speak for myself, and I'm sure the rabbi feels the same way. Um, I am the great grandchild of folks who immigrated to Israel in order to set up a homeland for the Jewish people. My grandparents were founders of the city of Tel Aviv. My Mm -hmm. father fought in the War of Independence in 1948. The reason that my family and my ancestors did what they did was to ensure that somewhere on earth uh, there is a national homeland for the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle that after 1900 years that homeland is in the exact same place that it was for our people millennia ago. It's, it's a wondrous, wondrous achievement, uh, and it's something that I think all of us who are pro-Israel want to ensure that there will be a national homeland of the Jewish people. The Palestinian people deserve a homeland too. They have national rights and national aspirations. The sad thing is that the six and a half million Jews and the six and a half million Palestinians want the exact same piece of land. And so there's two options. You know, they, they can either uh, have one state in which case, and and give everybody rights, in which case there's no guarantee that it will be a state of the Jewish people because what if the demographics change over time and the Jews end up without the ability to win the elections anymore and it's no longer a Jewish state? Or you deny the democratic rights of half the population and then it's not a democracy. But that's the choice. If you want to hang on to that land, all of that land, you must choose between the Jewish nature and the democratic character of the state. The only way to keep both is to partition the land and have two states for two people. Uh, Is that going to happen? I believe yes in the long run. The sad reality of this is the real question is how much bloodshed and violence and uh, agony will there be on the road to that? Because there's no other solution to this. And so you can either make the difficult compromises today and avert another you know, several decades of violence and conflict, or you can wait until we've gone through that and then say, all right, I'm ready. And I'd like to add to that uh, an eternal optimism that, uh, yes, there will be a a resolution, and at the same time, a sad reality that until the Jewish community across the world and the Israeli government acknowledges that they don't want to be an occupier 
of the land of another nationalist entity and finds a way to permit both national aspirations to be fulfilled, there will be inevitable bloodshed and, and an absence of peace. So there's really no choice. It seems to me, though, that the the position uh, ever hardens with uh, President uh, Trump's talking about moving – well, he's going to. He's going to move the embassy to Jerusalem and the settlement uh, situation is still a thorn in the side of any progress. Well, I also want to make sure that between the rabbi and myself, you know, we are being fairly hard on Israel and we're being fairly hard on, on the United States. But I want to make sure that everybody who's listening understands there's a third party here, uh, that the Palestinian leadership as well – uh, holds a great deal of responsibility for the failures uh, to get to a compromise over the course of the decades. And so it, it does uh, – it, it behooves us to make sure that they're included in this conversation as well. And the failure of leadership on the part of the United States, the failure of leadership on the part of Israel is more than matched uh, by the failure of leadership on the Palestinian side. And so there's a, a failure all around, and this kind of a conflict ultimately requires leadership – probably on all three of those sides for us to get where we need to go. And the star stars have never aligned over the course of the last couple of decades to have the right leaders at the right time. And, and they don't show any signs, that's my point, of aligning at the present time and for the foreseeable future. And, no. one, and one could argue that the kind of chaotic leadership that we're seeing um, of kind of an impulsive uh, move to, for example, declare the capital of Israel of as uh, as Jerusalem and to move the embassy to to Jerusalem in order to affirm that. Uh, while most of us would agree that the capital of Israel is Jerusalem and that the embassy should ultimately be there, C leadership doesn't happen in chaos. Leadership happens in thoughtful and strategic ways. And I think it's true to say that J Street ultimately supports. The American embassy. I don't want to speak for Jay Absolutely. Street, uh, being in Jerusalem, but the way it's being done and at the time it's being done is irresponsible, and that is an important statement to make. In with the right leadership in the Palestinian community and the Israeli community and the United States, we could actually see these issues resolved over time. Could an organization like uh, J Street um, have any contact with Palestinian leadership to try to get this, uh, this this ball moving again in the proper direction, or is that just out of the question? Well, J Street is an American organization, right, and and what you need is you need Israelis and Palestinians talking to each other. J Street is in regular contact with the Palestinian leadership. I have met numerous times with President Mahmoud Abbas and with various prime ministers and ministers of the Palestinian Authority. I've done speaking tours with the PLO ambassador. Uh, so we're, we're in very frequent contact. I think one of the misunderstandings that happens in the American Jewish community is the concept that there isn't a partner for peace. Uh, there actually is. Uh, the current leadership of the Palestinian Authority and of the PLO, uh, they do believe in a two-state solution. They understand that Israel is here permanently, uh, that there is going to be a state of the Jewish people that is living next to them. Uh, and to willfully at times not hear uh, President Abbas through the noise. Look, he says awful things at times, and he has denied Jewish connection to Jerusalem, and he's called uh, the ambassador, who I don't particularly like very much, the American ambassador, he called him names this week. And, you know, these are not productive things. And this is why there's a failure on all sides. But the bottom line is President Abbas has been committed to the two-state solution, to diplomacy, and to nonviolence for 25 years now, and people should give him some credit for that. Right. We have to take a break. Let's do that now. We have some people calling in. I want to get them into the conversation. We'll do that when we come back. We are talking about the organization J Street and about the uh, situation in the Middle East and what it hopes will be some influence here in the United States to resolve some of the major issues that uh, are present there. My guests in studio are Jeremy Ben-Ami, founder and president of J Street, and also Rabbi Jim Bennett of Congregation Share Emmeth. They're having a discussion tonight. We'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWMU. <music> And welcome back as we continue our conversation about the liberal peace advocacy organization, J Street. Let me go right to the phones here because we have some people who have waited and I don't want them to get away. So let's bring in Sandra calling from Glen Carbon, Illinois. Sandra, you're on the air. Hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to thank you for this conversation. 
Um, I am Palestinian, living in the area, and um, I'm just, uh, you know, have a question about this idea of demographics. Um, Jeremy Benami said that you know two states are needed because eventually, perhaps, a Palestinian uh, majority might uh, make it impossible for a Jewish state to exist. Um, I just want to point out that. Um, one out of five Israeli citizens is Palestinian, and um, that possibility could exist in a two-state situation. What happens to Palestinian citizens of Israel um, if demographics were to change? Um, Jewish and democratic means second-class citizenship for um, Palestinians who live in the state. And so I just want to help. I, I need some help understanding what is the what is the legal status of Palestinians when when a Jewish state um, is the priority. Thanks, Sandra. Well, I really appreciate the question, Sandra, and it is so critical to people like me, and I'm sure to Rabbi Bennett as well, who are uh, advocates of a national homeland of the Jewish people, that that national homeland be democratic and that it ensure the equality of all of its citizens, regardless of their race and religion and ethnicity. Uh, There are 20% of the citizens of the state of Israel who are Palestinian by descent. Uh, They are entitled to vote and they are entitled legally to equal rights, but they don't receive them. And and we are very familiar with that kind of a situation where you have minority groups in a democracy that don't receive full benefits and rights. And it is part of the cause that I fight for and that I'm sure the rabbi does as well uh, to ensure equality of all of the citizens of the state. And I am just saying in the context of the resolution of the larger conflict uh, that the creation of a national home for the Palestinian people ensures that both people have a homeland where they can fulfill uh, their national and collective right to self-determination. But is there any merit to the arguments of some scholars and even the United Nations report calling Israel an apartheid state? And we all know what that means, uh, given the South African experience, that uh, the Palestinians are second-class citizens and, and tamped down. I think it's invalid to use that term uh, related to the state of Israel. Uh, Palestinians who are citizens of Israel are full citizens, and they are entitled to full rights. They do not receive those full rights, much as in this country, in the United States, there are many areas of the country where people receive far less than the services they are entitled to, and there is discrimination in services, and there's a constant battle for civil and equal rights in the United States, and there will be in Israel as well. But that is a far cry from a system of apartheid within the state of Israel. Uh, On the West Bank, in the occupied territory over the Green Line, uh, where there is not civil law equally applied to all peoples, I think it's a real challenge for the future of Israel uh, when that approaches a situation that would be as uh, horrible as the one that was in South Africa. I don't think we're there yet, but it is much closer on the West Bank. Does your support for Israel include support for Benjamin Netanyahu? Uh, he, uh, he has his own problems right now personally with regard to certain corruption allegations, but is he an impediment to the progress? He is an absolute impediment, and, and I am a huge, huge supporter of the United States and an opponent of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. I think he is doing horrible things to this country. I am a huge, huge supporter of the state of Israel, and I'm an opponent of of Prime Minister Netanyahu's politics and policies. And I think that his policies are driving Israel over a cliff in which it loses the opportunity for two states and loses the chance to maintain its democratic and Jewish nature. I think you can be pro-Israel and oppose the sitting government of a country. Boy, we're looking at a potential situation, though, in which uh, Donald Trump could be president until 2024 and Netanyahu... God knows how long he might be around. And and J Street is a political organization. Uh, We believe that those two things are not good, uh, and we work day in and day out to try to change that. That's that's the nature of J Street is to work for a better future, to work for a change in the politics. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to convince congressional leaders? I mean, is that your approach? If if you've given up on a Donald Trump, which I kind of suspect you have, where where do you go? Where where do you— place your influence? Well, absolutely. The number one place where J Street works is in the U.S. Congress. That is where we focus the majority of our work. Uh, We actually have a political action committee as well that looks to elect new people uh, to Congress. And we're very active in the 2018 elections. 
And there's a huge opportunity, I think, for those of us who want to see change in Washington uh, come November uh, to elect dozens and dozens of new members of Congress and and the Senate who can act essentially as an emergency break uh, on not only this issue, but there are so many challenges to this country and the world from this administration, and you need a change in Congress in order to put a break on that. Well, there was a primary election in Illinois yesterday, third congressional district in which the incumbent won, and he was supported by APEC, as I understand it, and his, his uh, rival was reported by your organization, and she lost. She did. It was about a 1% uh, distinction That's between close. the two. It was a very close election. Uh, and as I understand it, in Illinois' open primary, uh, you know, the, the majority of Democrats who voted in the primary supported uh, Marie Newman, who was the J Street PAC endorsed candidate, uh, and 85 percent of the Republicans who chose to vote in that open primary supported uh, the incumbent. And I believe that ended up providing the margin of victory. Yeah. Let's take another call. We'll bring in Arthur calling from University City. Arthur, thanks for waiting. You're on the air. Arthur? Uh, my understanding of how J Street uh, characterizes its position versus APEC is that uh, J Street says that uh, APEC supports, a- APEC says we should support Israel at all costs, and uh, that, Israel, that Israel is entitled to all the lands that it now has um, for religious reasons or whatever reasons. And I have never heard anybody say those things. Um, what, what, what I have heard is that they, there's a fundamental lack of, uh, of trust in, in, uh, in Abbas or, there's, or the Palestinians as warning piece, and there is a concern for uh, the difficulties of the Israelis in, in, in protecting themselves from, from terror or other problems. And, and, and that's what I... Uh, see is the difference between uh, J Street and and some of the other um, uh, aspects of uh, J- J- Jewish politics that that they that, that that's a disagreement and I, I I don't think it's fair to characterize the, uh, the the Jews who are opposed J Street as sort of m- mindless that that they that, that they want want everything for Israel and care nothing about the Palestinians I've never heard of Jews like that. So, so I, you know, I would agree with you that uh, certainly the folks who are supportive of uh, APAC are not uh, mindless and, and are not in any way uh, expressing a disdain for Palestinian people. What APAC stands for, and I would let them speak for themselves, but the premise of the organization founded now 60 years ago uh, was to support the policies of the sitting government of Israel. Uh, and J Street's premise is that to support Israel, you don't have to support uh, the policies of the government of Israel if you, in fact, think that they are leading not only Israel but the United States uh, in in a uh, unhelpful direction. And so that's the distinction that I see. And there are a lot of very good people uh, who support APAC with some really good friends of mine and, and, and wonderful people who care deeply about Israel. Uh, but I think that the premise of the organization of blind support uh, and unquestioning support for the sitting government of Israel is a flawed premise. What do you make of the BDS movement, the, uh, the sanctions movement, basically, uh, and the divestment movement, to uh, force Israel to uh, to uh, better treat the Palestinians, is what the what the proponents say. Well, I understand their goal, uh, but the question I always ask to the BDS movement is: I, as a pro-Israel Jew, uh, believe that the Palestinians have a right to a state of their own. So I asked the BDS movement, do the Jewish people have a right to a state of their own? My problem with the BDS movement is I never hear any recognition of the right of the Jewish people to a state. I do not hear support for a two-state resolution to the conflict, for a reasonable compromise that allows us to end this conflict. And I hear no distinction uh, in the criticism of Israel between what's happening on the West Bank and in the occupation over the Green Line and the state of Israel itself. And so I have a fundamental problem with the BDS movement, and J Street is opposed to the BDS movement on those grounds. It's not the tactics of boycotts and divestment. Those are legitimate tactics in a political 
argument, but it's the movement and its philosophy that I and J Street have a problem with. Rabbi, this is something that I'm sure you know is being debated in uh, our General Assembly right now. What are your thoughts on it? And and uh, if uh, you're opposed to it, as I assume you are, uh, what action can you take to try to influence it? Well, I would echo what, what Jeremy just said, that uh, like J Street, I think most American Jews find the BDS movement as a whole to be uh, out of sync with our belief that Israel should have uh, a free marketplace and that uh, exercising such tactics to strong-arm Israel, even Israel in the main, uh, into certain behaviors is is a mistake. Um, And I believe that the actions being explored by the Missouri legislature right now, uh, considering a bill that's been brought to the floor of the the, uh, legislature to prevent... Uh, Missouri companies from exactly. – um, or f- the government of the state of Missouri from uh, uh, exercising boycotts of Israel is an appropriate one. And I support that bill and I s- encourage, as our uh, local JCRC has done and many others in the state of Missouri, to to support this effort. And I also am uh, – in agreement with and aligned with the the nuance of J Street's position that says uh, exercising boycotts against behaviors in the West Bank and the occupied territories is a very different thing than a broad stroke BDS movement that uh, wipes Israel with one broad stroke. And it's and it's an important nuance that we have to understand. Let's take one more call as time begins to wind down. We'll bring in Naveen calling from St. Louis. Naveen, go ahead. Hi, yes. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I actually, I wanted to, there's two um, points I actually wanted to make. One, in regards to Israel being, it was, there was a little contradiction when it came to it being a system of apartheid or a discriminating state. Um, I definitely, I, I, I disagree with that. I think it is a system of apartheid. Um, and Naveen, and Naveen, excuse me for interrupting. We've got a very, very bad uh, line here, and I'm afraid we're going to have to just interrupt this uh, part of the conversation. We just can't understand what you're saying. Sorry. And I wish there were more time for you to call back on another line, but um, it's most unfortunate indeed. Too bad about Naveen. I would like to have heard, heard what she had to say. Jeremy, let me come back to you as we wind this down. What, um, what would you want ideally, for the United States government to do right now? I mean, if you could call the shots, what would it be? Well, I think that the number one thing that has been lacking is for the United States to act as an honest broker, to act as a true mediator. The United States is is really the only party in the world that has credibility and leverage with both sides. And the United States could convene uh, the leadership of the Arab world, the leadership of Europe, Uh, together with the Israelis and the Palestinians at a single table and lay out a fair and a balanced proposal uh, for negotiations for a two-state solution. Uh, You know, the outlines of it are very well known. Two states for two people based on the 1967 lines, pre-67 lines with land swaps, with a capital for both states in Jerusalem and a just resolution of the refugee crisis and good security measures. Everybody knows the outline, uh, but you need leadership. And you need balanced, equitable leadership. And that is what is missing right now uh, from the picture, uh, is a leader to step forward with a realistic plan for ending this conflict. Are you sensing any support at all with your congressional contacts? Absolutely. I think that is a source of optimism. I think that there are numerous members of Congress who actually understand this, uh, are, are willing to step forward with a little bit more of an open mind and a little bit more of a balanced perspective. Uh, I think that is a change that J Street has helped to bring about in these last 10 years, is that there are people who are freed up uh, to say what they know is the right thing and now know that there's a body of political support behind them. And I think that's the accomplishment of J Street's first decade. We have a lot of work ahead of us in our second decade. Well, let's leave it on your optimistic note then. (laughs) Thank you so much, Jeremy Ben-Ami and Rabbi Jim Bennett for being with us today. A reminder, they are appearing for a discussion tonight at 730 at Congregation Chair Emmett. That's Amherst free, open to the public. Absolutely. Encouraging people to attend, I'm sure, to continue this dialogue. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for being with us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio 90.7 KWM. You. 
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.